Football today is just getting faster and faster and professional players are just getting more and more athletic. If we take a look at this study, they analyzed the Premier League from the 2006-2007 season all the way to the 2012-2013 season. We can see that although the distance covered by players is staying relatively the same, there is a 30% increase in high intensity running distance. There's a 50% increase in high intensity running actions. There's a 35% increase in sprint distance. There's an 85% increase in the number of sprints and there's a 50 15% increase in the proportion of explosive sprints. And that's just from 2006 to 2013. I would argue that from 2013 to 2023, we'd probably see a similar trend of getting faster and faster and faster and doing more sprints in a game. So if you're a player who's watching this and you're not fast, or you might be more on the unathletic side, do you have a chance to play professional football? Does this trend mean that slower players can't have successful careers? No, not at all, at least in my opinion. If you are not the most athletic player, or you're not the fastest guy on your teams, you just need to realize that you can't have the same play style as Holland or Mbappe or Dembele. You won't be able to take the same touches that Alfonso Davies takes and be successful. You won't be able to play like Holland plays and score goals. You won't be able to beat defenders the way that Dembele beats defenders. Because these players are clocking speeds over 35 kilometers an hour. And most likely you are not clocking those speeds. You need to find success on the field in a different way, in your own way. So now the glaring question is how? How should you play to be successful, especially as the game is played faster and faster? And in my opinion, the best way to answer this question is to study players who are not fast. Study players that kind of move like molasses and figure out how they create space, how they beat defenders, how they score goals and get assists and find success on the field while being much slower than the rest of the players on the field. The players that we're gonna look at today are gonna to be Tony Cruz, Jorginho, Tiago Alcantara, Bernardo Silva, Thomas Mueller, and Busquets. All of these players have not clocked a top speed over 31 kilometers an hour in the Champions League this season. And by doing that, that puts them at the bottom 10, 20% of all the players that have played in the Champions League. We'll also look at Andres Iniesta and Cesc Fabregas just from a few years ago because they're also not very fast players, but they find space, time, and they excel at the highest level. So the first thing that I hope you guys are already noticing just by hearing this list and seeing these names is that all of these players specialize or excel in a technical or tactical tactical area of the game. And that brings me to the first tip for unathletic footballers, find an area of the game that you can excel at. For example, I think a player like Tony Cruz or Jorginho sets themselves apart from other players through superior passing ability and vision on the field. Or you might have players like Thiago Alcantara or Bernardo Silva who just have that superior ball control and ability to play in tight spaces and just that complete composure in the middle of the field. Or you have players like Thomas Mueller or Busquets who I think they just have such an amazing understanding of the game and really reading the game and what needs to happen next through their off-ball movements, that they're able to succeed at a higher level. It could also be in areas like your finishing ability or your just your leadership in the back, your 1v1 defending, just your strength and size as a player. Whatever it is that makes you special or what you can work on to make you special, you need to hone in on that, double down on that skill and stand out on the field by tapping into that area. The second piece of advice that I have for slower or more unathletic players is to really use your first touch to create space for yourself. When you watch these players that I've mentioned on the field, you'll notice that all of them put an extra emphasis and extra care into their first touch so that they can create more space for themselves, have more time on the ball and get away from faster or more agile defenders. Because if that ball comes into you and you take a touch now and it's a 50-50 now between you and the defender, that advantage completely swings to the defender who's faster than you because he's gonna get to the ball there first. Watch how with this loose touch in the center of the field, the faster defender, Cal Walker, is able just to easily win this ball. And on the flip side, if you're a faster player, you of course still wanna have a good touch, but you can get away with touches that aren't perfect because you can make up for the fact that you can get there before other players just through your speed and athleticism. Watch here how Alfonso Davies kind of misses the ball and has a bad first touch, but it doesn't result in a counterattack the other way because he's able to explode out and recover the ball as if nothing really happened. There was no mistake there. But if it was a slower player, he'd have to foul there or it'd be a counterattack the other way. And this famous goal from Gareth Bale, which I'm sure all of you guys have seen, if you watch his touch, his first touch there really isn't a good touch for 98% of players out there, maybe 99% of players. And the reason for this is because 98 or 99% of players just don't have the pace to be pushed five yards out of bounds and still be able to make a looping run 
cut in front of the defender and get to the ball first. And even his second touch really, I think is a little bit too far inside and a little bit behind him, but he's able to cut across that defender because he's so much faster. So slower players have to put that extra emphasis into their first touch to create space for themselves so they can retain the ball. And a lot of players on this list add a little bit extra deception, really turn their hips, throw in a Cruyff turn, or do a little extra tap across the body to really use the momentum of the faster player to their advantage. That player sees that deception and they overcommit and they're over aggressive and they fly forwards trying to stop that. And in the last moment, these players cut the ball back, take the touch in a different area, change directions. And now that faster, over aggressive defender goes flying the other direction. Once these players have created space for themselves with a good first touch, maybe some deception to get past that defender, now they realize that they're not going to be beating defenders the same way that Mbappe does. They're not going to be able to do a body feint and a five yard touch and just sprint by guys just using their pace. These players understand their strengths and weaknesses, and they know that it's a lot easier to get by defender doing an off ball run, a third man run, a one, two, than it is just to beat that defender off the dribble. I'm not saying that these players never dribble, but they really do use off ball movement to their advantage. And that's the next tip that I have for you guys. Majority of the time, you should be focusing on your off ball movement to get in behind defenses, get in behind defenders, and to get past players. Iniesta, when he was at Barcelona, was probably the best example of fantastic off ball movement. It looks like Iniesta is one of the faster guys on the field through his off ball movement and the runs that he's making. But he understands that when he passes that ball, a lot of defenders tend to ball watch. They turn, look at the ball and they stop, they stand still. And he's able just to run at his 31 kilometers an hour past these guys and create space for himself, get behind these defenders because the defender has stopped and just watched the ball. So definitely still try to beat defenders off the dribble if you think that's the right time to do so. But as a slower player, you're typically gonna rely more on your off ball movement to get into dangerous areas. Now, like I just said, I don't want you guys thinking that if you are towards the slower side or more unathletic side, that you shouldn't try to take guys one-on-one -on -one or you shouldn't try to beat guys off the dribble. You 100% still can and you should, but you have to do it the right way. You need to realize that in order to really be a faster defender, you need to rely on deception. And you can deceive a defender by doing a change of your pace, which is slowing down, speeding up, stopping, going fast again, or a change of direction cuts, turns, going in a different way than expected. And like I hinted at earlier on in this video, you can use a faster player's speed to your advantage as a slower player because faster players tend to be over aggressive. They want to try to fly by you and win the ball. They want to try to predict where you're going and cut you off. They want to try to use their speed. But when a player is flying in one direction at a very fast speed, it's very hard for them to turn, shift, and then go the opposite direction at a very fast speed. I think that Busquets is one of the all all time best players to watch when it comes to deception. He's constantly changing his direction, he's changing his action, he's changing his speed at honestly a really slow speed, but he's so deceptive about what his next action is that he seems to just be able to walk by defenders. This play right here is exactly what I'm talking about. Busquets is able just to change his actions. Oh, I'm gonna open up and play out to my right back. And as that defender tries to fly forward and block that pass, oh, I'm gonna change my mind, cut inside. Now I'm driving inside at a pretty slow pace. And then he pauses, he changes his pace, he slows down, the defender freezes, and then he speeds up again, or he cuts in a different direction. He's so deceptive about what his next action is and what he's going to do, that it's really hard for defenders to mark him. And even though he's getting by the defenders, he's not really exploding past them. It's more like the defenders are exploding past Busquets. So that's something that we all can learn from. Even faster players can learn from that you can get a defender to blow by you and then make it much easier for you to beat that guy by being deceptive. So once again, as a slower, more unathletic footballer, that's something that you guys really need to add to your arsenal. Even if you're a fast player, you should add it to your arsenal. But as a slower player, you need to have this if you really want to get by faster players. Change of direction, change of pace, change of action. The fifth tip that I have for you guys comes after you've beaten that defender. And what you'll notice by watching these players play is that typically they like to cut in front of that defender because they know if they run side by side that they're gonna lose that foot race. So what so many of these players do is they cut diagonally in front and put themselves between that defender and the ball so that either they're gonna get fouled or that defender is gonna slow up and they can continue driving, continue dribbling in front of that defender. And I think a huge misconception about using your body in football is that you have to be big and strong. 
you don't have to be big and strong. Sure, it can help, but I think the players that use this the most effectively are some of the smallest guys on the field. Watch Andres Iniesta do this perfectly. He's able to keep the ball because as soon as he steps in front of this defender, the defender's trapped. The only thing that the defender can do here is either continue to run forward and foul Iniesta, or he has to slope his run and just stay behind him. Fabregas is also fantastic at this. He's a small, tiny player, but he's constantly turning and shifting and putting his body in between that defender and the ball. And just like I've been saying, the defenders either keep on running and they foul him and then he earns a free kick, or they have to slow up or change or try to go around him. And then Fabregas is able to basically explode past them at a slow pace. So as a slower, more unathletic player, the worst thing you can do is just run side by side with a player in a foot race. Get yourself in between the ball and the player and you will be able to create a lot of time and space for yourself that way. Now, the sixth tip that I have for you guys is to really understand the game and try to set up your faster teammates. I think most professional players are very well-rounded and they have the ability to pass the ball well, shoot the ball well, dribble, do a step over, defend, but they do specialize in their job for their team. So you don't have to be the guy who's sprinting and making runs in the box. You don't have to be the guy who's beating guys 1v1 off the dribble all the time. You can be the guy who sets up those faster players. You can be the more creative midfielder. You can be the defender who does more of the, the brunt work. But again, in order to do this, you need to have a very good understanding of the game an understanding of what you can do to get away with not being as fast. I think Thomas Mueller is such a good player to watch because he's really nothing special athletically, but he has such a great understanding of the game and he's constantly reading what's going on, what runs are his teammates making, where's the space where he should run into. He's so good at understanding the game and breaking down defenses, not through his superior technical ability or through his crazy speed, but just because he understands what a good run is or what a good run his teammate is making and where that ball needs to be delivered in order to create a chance. And again, I think Tony Cruz excels at this as well. One of the best midfielders of our time, but he barely ever breaks into a sprint. He just reads the movements of his teammates extremely well. And then he has this amazing technical ability to deliver the ball to those teammates in those areas at a very high consistency. And the seventh and final tip that I have for you guys is to not give up on your speed or your athleticism. Continue to work on the field or in the gym or on the track or wherever it is on your sprinting ability, on your athleticism, on your plyometrics, on, on whatever to get faster. If you're watching this and you go, okay, that sounds great, but what do I do? Plyometrics and sprinting exercises will honestly be your best friend. Focus on box jumps and different variations of box jumps, squat jumps, broad jumps, Nordic curls, Romanian deadlifts, hip flexor work, Bulgarian split squats, trap bar deadlifts, sled pushes, hill sprints, and even just normal sprints at the field. By just doing these exercises uh, once or twice a week, you're gonna be able to improve athletically and get faster. And yes, genetics plays a huge part into what makes a player fast. And I will never become as fast as Mbappe, no matter what workouts I do, but I can get a lot faster than I currently am by doing the right workouts and eating the right way and just improving my athleticism through hard work. And every single person can do that. You watching this video right now can get faster, can get more athletic. And if you just improve your top speed by a few kilometers an hour, or you improve your jumping ability a little bit, or you improve your ability to change and accelerate in a different direction, even just a small fraction of a percent, that's going to help you on the field. And if you can get yourself from the slowest guy on the team or the most unathletic guy on the team or towards the bottom of the team, and you can just push yourself up to maybe even middle of the pack athletically, and then you combine your great technical ability, your passing ability, your understanding of the game tactically, you can set yourself apart from all of your peers and reach that next level. So that's the video, guys. I hope that you really enjoyed it. If one of these tips was eye-opening for you guys or it helped you in any way, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video. That helps out the channel a lot. But anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. All right, guys. Peace.